I'm Tony Keat, the Christmas Light Guy. Welcome to another episode of my series called the 5 Minute Tips and Tricks. I'll show you a handy tip or trick in just 5 minutes. In this tutorial, I'll explain power injection in simple terms. What is power injection? Is it a disease? No, it is not. Is it black magic? No, it is not. Power injection is nothing to be intimidated about. I have to admit, I avoided it until I needed it, but power injection is easy and straightforward. There's just a couple rules that you need to follow. So, what is power injection? In simplest terms, it's adding additional power to a string or strip of lights in order to boost the voltage back up. Why is power injection needed? If we take a look at the electrical characteristics of a string of pixels, it will be easier to understand. Here is a simple circuit with a 12 volt power supply and 5 RGB LEDs. I've left the controller out to simplify the circuit. The pixels are running at 100% intensity and each draw about 60 milliamps. The wire is standard 20 gauge with about 4 inch spacing. Wire has some resistance. That's why the wire is modeled as tiny resistors. The amount of current across the wire or resistor results in a small voltage drop. The voltage drop is accumulative the further you get away from the power supply. The voltage drop in this example with just 5 pixels is negligible. However, if you increase the number of pixels to 100 or 200 or 300, then it's a completely different story. Let's take a look at a very handy online tool. I'm going to use the spikerlights.com RGB pixel light power calculator. I've opened up the calculator with the default settings. I'm going to update the pixel watts to 0.72, pixel wire size to 20 gauge, set the pixel count to 200, and as you notice, around 110 pixels, the graph becomes red, which indicates significant voltage drop and where power injection is needed. Let's change a few of the parameters again. For example, uh, I run my lights at 30%. My pixels are 18 gauge wire. Even with changing those, we still have significant drop once we hit about 285 pixels. The graph becomes red and power injection is needed. This is a great tool and I recommend using this calculator when thinking about power injection. It also allows you to specify power injection points. For example, if power injection is added to the last pixel in the string of 300, let's see what happens. So I'm going to go here, I'm going to select the last pixel. I'm going to add the power. Notice that the voltage drop is now acceptable and the graph remains green for all 300 pixels when we added power injection to the last pixel. Now you understand why power injection is needed. Let's look at a couple different examples. I will cover three examples you need to be concerned with when it comes to power injection. One example is when using a single power supply and two examples when using multiple power supplies. Let's take a look at the single power supply example first. In this example, each RGB LED represents 100 pixels for a total of 500 pixels. Power injection is added after each 100 pixels. The guidelines for using power injection with a single power supply are easy and straightforward. Plus V is common and continuous with multiple power injection points, which means you can connect the plus V from the power supply to the plus V on the pixels at multiple power injection points. Minus V is common and continuous with multiple power injection points. It's the same as the plus V. You can uh, put it at multiple places and connect it to the power supply. Data is always continuous per data port. In this example, it is similar to the previous example 
with two power supplies. The controller here can separate the power supplies by ports, normally one half of the ports for one power supply and the other half for the other power supply. Each RGB LED represents 100 pixels for a total of 500 pixels per port. Power injection is added after each 100 pixels. The guidelines for using power injection with multiple power supplies are a bit different. Never ever connect plus V together from multiple power supplies. Notice that the plus V here and the plus V here are not connected together. Plus V is common and continuous with multiple power injection points from a single power supply. That means that from this power supply, the plus V is continuous and common and can be injected at multiple places. Same for this power supply. The minus V is common for multiple power supplies and continuous for uh, multiple power injection points. Notice that the minus V and the minus V from the power supplies are connected together. They are common and can be and continuous and can be injected at multiple places. Data is always continuous per port, meaning the data goes from this port all the way to the last pixel. Here is another example of using multiple power supplies. In this example, there are two power supplies on a long string of pixels. Power supply 1 is powering the controller and the first 300 pixels. Power supply 2 is powering the last 200 pixels. The guidelines for using power injection with multiple power supplies are still the same. Remember, never connect plus V together on multiple power supplies. That means that this plus V on this power supply and this plus V on this power supply cannot be connected together. That means you must cut the plus V wire prior to the power injection point. All other guidelines are the same. Power injection isn't difficult if you follow the guidelines I outlined. Remember, never connect plus V together on multiple power supplies. I hope you've enjoyed this tutorial and learn something new from it. If you did and would like to see more tutorials like this, please like this video and subscribe to my channel, The Christmas Light Guy. Remember, it doesn't cost anything to subscribe. All you have to do is press the subscribe button below.